Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, this is Dr. Robinson again, and we're going to continue our study skill series. Uh, we're talking about probability. This is our grade seven show number three. So let's get into it. There are a couple things you should know. If you need help with your homework, there's the Dialer Teacher Homework Helpline at 212-777-3380 from Monday to Thursday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Very good teachers. They'll help you with your topics. You can also watch my YouTube study videos. My channel name is Dan Robinson. You can subscribe to our channel, please, and give us a thumbs up, write us a note, let us know how things are going. So please comment, and I do write back. You can check out our latest release, PKMS Math Prep 19. We're working on PKMS Math Prep 20, a very good movie as well, a little 20 year history of what we've been doing uh, these past years. You can tweet me at DRobMath1. So I'll be glad to hear from you. Don't forget to check out our show Math Time on Tuesdays from 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Optimum Cable Vision, Channel 15, and Peak Skill. So we're going to get into it. So our test for our study skills, uh, grade 7 probability test. So. Here's what the test composition is made of, complex fractions and equalities, algebraic expressions, and last of all, probability. So let's go over a few things. So complex fractions, here's our first complex fraction. So um, since you are able to use a calculator on this, I would recommend you definitely use it. So first thing I would do is start with the top, negative one half plus two thirds, divided by 5 thirds times 0 0.75 minus 11 eighths. So that's a lot to do. And a calculator would definitely help you out. So I would recommend you start it by doing the numerator first, finding out what that is equal to, then find out what the denominator is equal to, and then uh, use your divide button because the fraction bar means divide, and that'll give you the answer. So let's take a look at this. So here we have negative one half plus two thirds. When we use our calculator, that gives us one six. On the bottom, we have to multiply. So don't forget to put your parenthesis there. So three fifths, parenthesis 0 0.75 minus 11 eighths, and parenthesis, and that'll give us on the denominator a negative three eighths. So here is our fraction. It's a complex fraction, which is a fraction that has either a fraction on top or the bottom or both top and bottom uh, numerator and denominator. So uh, we have 1 6 over negative 3 eighths. And remember, the fraction bar means divide, so really it's a division problem. So we've been typing our calculator 1 6 divided by negative 3 eighths. And we would get negative 4 ninths. Now you can get your calculator and type that into your calculator to change it into a decimal or just divide 4 by 9 and that'll give you the decimal equivalent which is a repeating decimal of negative 0 0.4444 so I just put a line on top of that. So either form is correct. So that's complex fraction. If you haven't uh, really uh, gotten into it, check a look at my video on complex fractions. We go into it uh, pretty good. All right, let's talk about inequalities briefly. Uh, which, what number is not, and let's put a little on the line, not part of the solution set of the inequality below. So here's our inequality. What number minus 10 is less than or equal to 16? Now I can put each one of these numbers since I have a multiple choice in place of W to see if it's true. So I could put like 11 minus 10 and see what that equals to. So 11 minus 10 is one and one is definitely less than 16. So that works out. So I can say this is this will work out. So that is a set. So I can try 15 next, 26 next, but I'm not going to do that. Let's clear this. So, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to solve this as I normally would an equation. So we did this in our inequalities video, so you might want to check that out. So I'm just going to add 10 to both sides, 
add 10 to both sides, cancel out the 10, that way I, I'll have the W isolated, and the 10's canceled out here. 16 plus 10 is 26. So I'm looking for all number, I'm looking for one number, which is not, and I can put a slash down here. Let me get a different color for that. I want a not that's not less than or equal to 26. So what number is not less than 26? Well, 26 is equal to 26. 27 is not less than 26. It's more than. So I would say 27 will be the number. 26 is equal to 26. So the one that is not less than 26 would be 27. So I would choose choice D to answer that. That would not be a part of the solution set. And if you were to graph it, and you might want to check out my video on graphing inequalities, uh, I would the graph of this would be 26. And if you remember, Dr. Rob said, you put a circle on top of that. If there's a line underneath, you would color in your circle because that means if there's a line, you have color and the arrow is pointing in the general direction the inequality is going. So it's going that way. If we continued our number line, 27 would be over here. So that's why we would not have 27 as part of the solution. So all the answers would be solutions going less than or equal to 26 going that way, like 25 or 24, all of those numbers, anything less than. So those numbers going down that way. So that's choice is choice D. So let's check it. Choice D. All right, let's move on. So check your understanding. I hope things are going well for you. If not, we watch the video and Check out those other videos that I mentioned to help you out. Okay, we've done two things so far. Let's get to our next one, algebraic expressions. All right, an algebraic expression is a problem without an equal sign. So it does have letters and variables there. So let's take a look at this one. Which expression is equivalent to 7 halves h minus 3 parenthesis 5h minus a half? So nice, they give us a multiple choice. So let's get to it and see what we got to do. Well, first thing I notice, we got to do some distributing here. So this has got to be distributed to this stuff inside here, the minus 3. So there's some distribution. So let me get over here because I don't like writing on the problem. 7 halves h minus 3. And that was, I believe, a 5h minus 1 half. Okay, so let's start the distribution process. So let's get a little room down here, a little space. All right, let's choose a color here. Okay, so I'm going to distribute the minus 3 to everything that's inside the parenthesis. Minus 3 times the 5h. That's going to be distributed. Then I'm going to distribute the minus 3 times the minus 1 half. So let's do my distribution, all right? Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15, and don't forget the h. Negative 3 times 1 half, negative 1 half, that'll give me a positive, and if you forgot how to multiply numbers, the whole numbers times fractions, I'll just say put a little 1 underneath the 3, and multiply top times top, 3 times 1 is 3, and 2 times 1 is 2. And remember, same signs is positive, so that would give us a positive three halves. And so let's bring this down. We got seven halves each. And here we have a seven halves H and a 15, negative 15 H. And we have a plus three. So we have three things to put in our columns. So if you remember in adding polynomials or 
simplifying polynomials and you might want to check out that video we had uh columns we would put we would put our constant in one column i put a hashtag for constant and our h's letters variables in the other column so i would put a seven halves h here and a negative 15 h here and i have positive three halves here and i would add that all up so let's add this up so i get positive three halves so that's my constant now it's a multiple choice question i notice here they have negative three halves so that cannot be it and i notice this has negative three halves also so that cannot be it so i just eliminated two of my choices and I know I have to have positive three halves there. So it's either A or C. So if I had to guess, then I at least have a 50-50 chance of getting it right. And talking about probability in a minute. But um, let's see. I have the deal with my H's now. So I know I have the three halves. So if I have my calculator, I could deal with this. But I know another way of writing 15 would be to write, since I have a 2 over there, let me put a 1, I would just want to make this a 2. I would multiply, let's get a different color, I could multiply this by 2, and multiply this by 2, and that will give me negative 30 on the top, negative 30 over 2, and that would give me here negative 30 over 2, H is another way of writing the 15, so I don't have to write 15. I can write negative 30 over 2H. And now I would have, and let's bring that down here, I'd have a negative, I'd have a 7 over 2H, and I have a negative 30 over 2H. And now I can subtract the top numbers. So 7 minus 30, from 30 is 23. And that'll be h and keep the denominator the same and now i have to choose the larger uh digits uh sign because it's larger than the, the other so that would be negative so it'd be negative 23 over 2 h so here i have negative 23 over 2 h so now i got my answer so negative 23 over 2 h and this one has 37 over 2 that's not what i'm looking for so c is incorrect so it's got to be choice a there's a negative 23 h over 2 h plus the three halves so that was a tricky question but not too bad we were glad we could eliminate some of the answers by making by looking at our constant using our table so our choice a would be the correct answer for that one good question all right let's keep moving on which expression represents the phrase below three fewer than a number comma p fewer than is another way of saying less than and if you remember in class, I told you when you see less than, you have to do something to the first term that's switch it. That means the 3 goes back here on the end, and the other term goes in the front. So you have to switch them. Fewer than is another way of saying less than or minus from. So, um, so the, since the 3 goes in the back, it cannot be in the front so that's why a is wrong fewer than doesn't mean divide so that's wrong so b is gone so i just mentioned that doesn't mean divide so our choice has got to be d but if you look p is in the front like we said because less than or fewer than means to switch places with the last term and the first term and there it is so our choice d is correct on this one so don't forget this is a typical a type of question word problem that comes up in algebraic expressions less than or fewer than so don't forget it means to switch 
So I hope you're understanding what's going on. If not, write down your questions, email them to me, or uh, see me in class when we get back there, and uh, we'll try to go over it and try to help your understanding. Okay, we've done algebraic expression. Now the last part we're going to cover is probability. All right, probability is the chances of something happening or not happening. It's a value between 0 and 1. So it can be 0 and it can be 1. It can be a percent, decimal, fraction as well. So here we have a passenger train has tickets available for 12 window seats and 8 aisle seats. The, per the next person to buy a ticket will randomly will be randomly assigned to one of those seats. What is the probability that the person, the next person will be assigned to an aisle seat? All right, well, my first question would be, uh, how many aisle seats are there? Because they want to know what's the probability that the next person randomly uh, is going to be assigned to an aisle seat. So the probability, probability of an aisle seat. How many aisle seats are there? They said there were eight. Eight aisle seats, so that's what they need, an aisle seat. Now, that's got to be out of how many total seats are there? How many total seats are there? Well, I see there are 12 window seats, so you can sit by the window. So I got 12 window seats, and I have eight aisle seats, so there are a total of 20 seats altogether. So there would be my fraction, 8 out of 20. But hey, I don't see that. So let me reduce this a little bit. So let's get a different color. So let's divide this by 4. Divide by 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. And 20 divided by 4 is 5. So do they have 2 fifths? Ah, there it is, choice B. So my choice answer is choice B. Oh, and there it is. 8 20th equals 2 fifths. So choice B is the probability of getting your aisle seat. Okay, that wasn't bad. Let's keep going. More probability. Oh, a board game has a spinner divided into sections of equal size. Each section is labeled with a number between 1 and 5. All right, so you got one and five. So I notice you got a lot of numbers here and a lot of sections that are equal. And I'm not looking at it briefly. I notice some of the numbers are repeating. So, so that's interesting. All right, well, what are they asking for? Which number is a reasonable estimate? Uh, when I see that word estimate, I underline it, which means I don't have to be exact. So I can be somewhere in the ballpark. So that's good to know. Which number is a reasonable estimate of the number of times the spinner will land on a section labeled 5 over the course of 150 spins? Wow, they're going to spin this thing 150 times? All right, well, how many 5s are there? So let's get my 5. So let's a nice color so we can see all right so where's my five i have a five here that's one i have another five here two and i have another five here so i have the probability of getting a five there are three of them out of all of these different sectors that are there so if i counted up all the sectors there's a total of 12 sections on this spinner. So there are 12 equal sections because I just counted them all up and that'll give me 12 sections. Now, some of them have a five on it already, which is good because I need a five, which makes my chances more likely to uh, win. So the more fives, the better it is for me, but I only have three of them. So three out of the 12 sectors are fives. So that probability of getting a five would be three out of 12. Now, here's what's interesting. They're going to do this 150 times. 
Well, the key word is the number of times or trials that they're actually experimenting with this probability. So they're doing it 150 times. So let me put down 150 here. They're doing that that many times. In order to get a 5, I would need 3 out of 12 to get a 1 5. So if I did it 150 times, so I've been spinning it that many times, if I multiply it out, I'm going to get approximately 37.5 fives. That's what I would get exactly. I don't know what a point five is, but hey. So um, they want us to estimate, because I'm looking at my answer choices, how many fives should I get? So I say 37.5 is the exact number of fives I should get, but um, that's not there. But they said estimate, so that means I can round off. So 37 and a half or 37.5 is close to 40. So I'm going to say C would be my proper choice of getting the number five. So I'm going to go with choice C. So let's see. First step, find the probability of getting five. Good. That was three out of five. My second step, I had to multiply the probability of getting five times 150. That gave me 37.5. And my last step would be to round off the 37.5 or estimate what that would be close to and round it off. That's close to 40. So that's why it's choice C and C is correct. So 40 is a good answer. So what a good probability question this was. Okay, let's keep going. All right, Edward conducts a simulation using a coin, a number cube, and a spinner as shown below. All right, so there's his penny. There's his dice cube, and there's a spinner, one, two, three, four, on the spinner. What is the number of outcomes for this simulation? So they want to know about outcomes, or we call it sample space. So he has a lot of different outcomes that could occur when you do these activities together. So let's take a look at these different activities when we have our penny. When he tosses his penny, what could he get? He can get a head or he can get a tail. That's two outcomes. When he tosses the coin, he can get a one, two, um, the dice cube, three, four, five, or six. So there's six different outcomes he can get. And when he spins a spinner, he has four numbers on it. He can get a one, two, three, or four with the spinner. So there's a four different items you can get. So we want to know what's the number of outcomes for this simulation. Well, let's look at the answer choices, 3, 8, and 12, and 48. Well, it, it can't be three because if you just toss a dice cube, you got six different outcomes. So that's not, not going to be it. Um, now let's look at eight, though. Eight, well, you got two different things you can get with a head of a coin. I'm sorry, you can get a head or a tail with a coin, and you can get uh, one, two, three, four, five, or six with a dice cube. So if I were to make a list, I can get a head with a one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that's six different outcomes with a head. But I could also get a tail, and let's get a different color with a tail. I can get a tail with a one, two, three, four, five, or six. So that's with a tail. So if I counted those all up, that's already 12. So I know B is wrong, and C has got to be wrong also, because I didn't even count the spinner yet. So I got to get more outcomes. So I'm going to automatically say the choice has got to be D. So I did that by process elimination and trying to make sense of it. But the real reason is called something called the counting principle. The counting principle tells you if you have m different things and you're doing it by n different things, you multiply both of those together. So what we have is a coin which has two different sides. We're going to multiply that by the dice cube, which has six different sides. And we're going to multiply that by the spinner, which has four different uh, uh, items that are going to come by out of it. So two times 
six is 12 and 12 times four is 48. So the counting principle will work. So our answer is choice D using the counting principle. So 48, or you can make a list. If I had time, I'd make a list for you. So that was a nice question about probability. So I hope you understand what's going on. If you're not sure, rewatch the video and hopefully you'll ask questions when you come back in the class or write me an email or something. All right. Uh, if you need help, there's always Dial a Teacher Homework Helpline at 212 at 777-3380, Monday to Thursday, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. You could also watch my YouTube study videos. My channel name is Dan Robinson. Subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up. Let us know how we're doing and what we can do even better. Check out our latest video, PKMS Math Prep 19. It's a very good movie. I think you'll like it. You can tweet me at DRobMath1. Don't forget to watch our show Math Time on Tuesdays on Optimum Cable Vision Channel 15 at 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. in Peak Skill. Very good show. I think you'll like it. Good luck on your test. I think you're going to do well. If you keep watching our study videos, then check out some of those other videos I've recommended. If you want some study material, study with Dr. Rob, uh, or just write me at robinsonmath at aol.com. So good luck. I hope you enjoyed our movie and don't forget math prep 20 is coming out shortly so look for it and i hope you enjoyed our lesson on study skills show number three probability see you next time bye bye this is dr robinson signing off